Hello, everyone, and welcome today on this beautiful, hopefully beautiful where you are, Wednesday, January 24th. I'm Spencer Nugent. Welcome to Adobe Pro Tips, where we professionals share a few tips with you. Um, hopefully everything's working this time. If anything pops up or if y'all have any issues, feel free to drop a message in the chat. I'm really excited to show you a bit of how I like to make my work feel a little bit more like my work. I know that's a weird sentence, but one of the important things as a professional is making sure that you can put your uh, own stamp on your work. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm an industrial designer, so that means that I design products for people, things people use. It could be clothing, could be shoes, could be toys, consumer electronics, whatever it uh, happens to be. I'm kind of a problem solver, design problem solver, and a big tool that I use when I'm solving problems is sketching. All right. So, oh, and I should mention, hello from Salt Lake City, Utah. That's where I'm based, originally from Jamaica. Okay. Um, first things first, I want to show you uh, just a little bit of um, some background here. Let's see. I hope this works. Nope, this is not working. Um, I need to tweak something here. Just a second, everyone. Uh, thought I had this this good to go. All right, give me two seconds. Uh, ready? Boom. Okay. Perfect. We are almost there. Two more seconds and we should be good to go. Uh, all right. My bad. Um, we'll just, oh no, I do need to fix this. Okay. Give me just another, uh, second here. Um, I thought I was good to go. My bad, everyone. Hold up, hold up. I guess in the meantime, let me know where you're watching from. Um, if anything exciting is happening in your world, I'd love to hear. Um, also, I would, I'm curious if you're illustrators, product designers, um, what do you all do? Um, feel free to, to drop that in the chat as I figure this out real quick here. All right. Uh, okay, I should be good to go in three, two, one and a half. <laughs> oh no, it's still not, still not giving me what I want. Um, okay. Okay, there we go. I think I've got it. I think I've got it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's switch. All right. Apologies for the little delay there. <laughs> My bad. Hello, Umacorn, Austin, Texas. I was just in Texas actually for over Christmas, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. Okay. I just wanted to show you. So as a professional, I have assets and resources. Um, specifically, I do make brushes. So I'm going to show you a little bit of how I go about making brushes. Now, if you're a curious creative, um, like I said, chances are you're trying to find a unique look for your work. So you've probably browsed the internet. Um, Adobe Stock is actually a good place to go if you want to find unique shapes for your brushes um, as you're creating them. So you can check that out. But I do have some brushes here available. Um, I don't want to focus on me, however, because there's also a wonderful thing that exists here on the Adobe website. All this stuff is free, by the way. Um, I think sometimes we don't even know what's free and available and for us to use so very very cool here kyle webster the amazing kyle webster has made some wonderful brushes you can download them so first things first i'm going to go through three things i like to do when i am uh, trying to add some unique uh, look to my work first thing is if i know an artist that i trust um, i can just look up and see if they make brushes he has a mega pack here there's other things but i'm curious about this watercolor so i'm going to download this i've downloaded a couple of these before so we're just going to hit download and boom there it is we have this file called watercolor.abr that has popped up now if i look in my downloads folder here on my mac i should oh it looks like i am a little bit cropped here so i'm just going to resize this uh Let's see. Whoa. Okay. Hold, please. 
Uh, da, 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 da. I think I messed up here. Okay. Just a second. I think they're gonna they're gonna have to give me a babysitter next time. <laughs> trying to get this to scale properly it's not letting me oh hold up i think you can oh no no you can see it just fine my bad i thought you weren't able to see it okay so i think i think we're okay here um i'm just gonna unlock this and just make sure we can see everything I think I need to do a little scale on my window. All right, because I do want you to see, uh, oops, see where I get my file from. Okay. All right, we're back. Hi. So once the file's downloaded, um, I can open that up. I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop here and boom. Why is this messing me up today? This is not okay. I'm so sorry, everyone. Okay, I'm just gonna have to manually switch this. So I have Photoshop open here. I have a file that I was working on a little bit. And if you wanna import a brush, I have the brush tool activated here. So I can right click. And if I click on this little gear icon in my brush window, I can just select import brushes. All right, I was gonna drag and drop them into Photoshop, but it doesn't seem to be playing nice with me today. So my apologies, everyone, um, on my little hiccups here. Won't happen again, promise. Um, but now that I, I uh, hit import, and for some reason, it's not letting me, oh my goodness, this is, this is kind of crazy today. All right, so we're gonna go back to, uh, this is frustrating, okay. Um, let's go, okay. Bear with me just one more second. I'm going to try and do... I had this set up, I promise. I had this set up before everything. And... Oh, goodness. Um, I need to make sure this is up there. And let's hit OK. All right. So this is a bit better. I think this will work. And I'm just going to scale... Uh, scale this down a bit. All right. I think the the techno technological gods are upset with me today or something. So, all right. Woo! The best laid plans, exactly. It's like, you know, you prepare the day before, you think everything's good to go, you restart your computer, you do all the things, and it doesn't work. Okay, here's that import brushes command. So I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to have to breeze through this just a little bit to make up for some lost time. But um, if I go to my downloads folder here, there's the watercolor.abr file. Okay, so we're going to hit open. And now in my brushes window here, I'm going to collapse some of this. I've, I have tons of brushes that I work with. So I'm just going to drag this up to the top. And now I have Kyle's watercolor brushes. So I have a bunch of brushes that have just populated into my brush window. Pretty cool. So even if you're curious and you don't know how to make brushes, you don't know how to modify them, you have the ability to import brushes into Photoshop. Okay, pretty simple. And... The best part is there's tons of free brushes. There's paid brushes as well. If you want to support your favorite artist, you can certainly do things that way. Um, it's entirely up to you. But let's say you get a brush and we'll play with a couple of these and see um, what they look like and how they feel. I was kind of just working on this little sketch here. So let's do some color and see what we get. All right, this one's a little bit slow, but it's pretty cool. You know, we can we can zoom in a bit. And check this out and you can kind of see the texture right so if i wanted to say color this shoe with an interesting uh brush this is a good starting point we've got the watercolor brush right here from kyle it's pretty awesome okay but let's say i want to maybe make things a little bit grittier or 
um, have a little bit more personality to them. I know it's really small, but I do want to show you and mention that I am using a Wacom stylus and Cintiq today. And this is important if you're going to be using brushes because one of the cool things about brushes is you do get the expression of the tool, quite literally, your pressure, how, far, how hard you're pressing on the screen, oftentimes will translate into the brush. But how do you control those settings? If we go to Window, uh, there's this uh, menu item here that says brush settings so I can click on that mine happens to be docked on the side but we can also pull this off and you'll see that we have access to all the brushes that we have uh, or sorry we have access to a bunch of settings for this individual brush okay if I expand this window there's the opportunity to change what the uh, stamp or shape of the brush is so this outline you see on the screen is called a stamp so think of a brush like one shape being repeated over a given path okay it's kind of like that so i can mess with things like shape dynamics so if i want to say i want the minimum diameter to be a lot smaller than kyle said cool i can do that i can play with this thing called angle jitter um, that just means that as you're drawing with the brush it's going to try and um, randomize if you will the angle of that brush stroke so now if i if i paint very lightly here i get a very thin stroke if i up this minimum diameter for example right now no matter how lightly i draw i'm going to get a certain size for the brush all right now i'm going to jump through these again because of time here we can play with what's called scatter and the cool thing is you can kind of see a preview on the bottom so if i did want like i said a little bit more rough edge to this watercolor brush this beautiful brush that kyle created you can see the difference there if i just adjust the scattering of the brush so even that small change can make a big difference you can also adjust the texture of the brush now brushes have texture inherent to them um if you want to apply that i should say so i can click on this and i have some additional textures that i've used in the past so for example if i want this light canvas texture that i have loaded okay we can see and i have to zoom in here so you can see it but it it, it gives the brush this uh this feel like you're actually painting on canvas right so again you can start with a brush that someone has created like kyle and then decide hey I want to add some texture to this, you know, as I'm painting my shoe here. And it almost gives it this fabric look and feel, which is kind of cool. Um, and just a, f a fun discovery there. Uh, there is dual brush, so you can combine brushes together, transfer. You can play with the opacity. If I want the opacity to jitter as I'm painting, meaning it's going to go light and dark as I'm painting, pretty cool. But what if I wanted to, say, make something of my own? My own brush like quite literally my own brush we've picked at the settings here a little bit and hopefully you have a little bit of taste of, of what you can change what you can tweak photoshop is really cool because well it is cool just in general um but you can actually let's say i'm going to go back to my favorites here i have this brush that i call the spencil because it's the spencer pencil get it so i can take this the spencil and i'm imagining for example that maybe there's some shape here that i want to have maybe repeated and i'm going to use this as my stamp so I'm, I'm effectively creating one squiggle shape whatever you want to call it we can put some random stuff in there all right it's it's always best to start with i think um a look or feel in mind i'm kind of just going random here because i want to show you how to use this and how cool this is going to be so now i'm going to on layer two here go ahead you can you can right click on the layer and we can select the pixels on that layer this is just i think this is just force of habit i've been using photoshop since version five or six so i like to select the exact pixels or we can um, do something like this since the background is transparent and then you're going to go to and here's where the magic happens we're going to go to edit define brush preset and i believe we can do that in brushes as well in the brush window um tap on this little menu uh, okay we can't do that my bad all right i'm going to go to edit define brush preset i thought we could do it in the window there all right so it's going to say hey what do you want to call this i'm going to call it the pro tip squiggle 
All right, it's the pro tip squiggle. Cool, now I have a brush preset. Okay, so this is the first step to making your own brush. You have to capture some pixels that are going to represent that stamp that you wanna use. So now I can, do I can uh, select that brush and then go to brush settings with that brush activated. And now I have all these options, okay? Because if I just start to paint with this brush, let me zoom out here so you can see, all right. <clears throat> Oh, here we go. If I just start to paint with this brush, okay, see, it's just repeating that shape. There's no dynamic to this shape, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Shape Dynamics, all right? Um, I'm not even going to play with the size jitter yet. I just want to play with the angle. I'm going to dial that up. And, well, actually, before I dial that up, let's go ahead and draw. Let's turn off these layers. I'll just draw a line here, okay? So you can kind of see how that brush looks. Now let's add some character to it. I'm gonna jitter the angle, okay? There's another stroke. So do you see that difference? Now it's almost like the stroke has this uh, randomized roughness to it, okay? We can also play with the size jitter, okay? So if I, if I crank this up, it's saying, okay, go between 100% and 60% of the brush size as you paint, and let's zoom out. So you can see the difference. So we've added a bit more character to this, this brush that we have here. Um, we can also play with scattering. So scattering, if, if you can imagine at the center of this brush, <clears throat> let's go, well, I don't wanna go back to my favorites, but at the center of this brush, okay, there is an imaginary line. And above and below that line, we can say, I want uh, this, this stamp. To be scattered and I can and you can kind of see the preview there in the preview window if I drag this up it's putting that putting those stamps above and below the brush so one of the things I try to do with my work is make sure that it feels human okay sounds maybe a little bit obvious but if a human were using a real tool or creating a real tool if it was made by humans it should feel somewhat organic somewhat like you know there's going to be some variation so let's go back to brush tip shape we can adjust the size of this brush as we go because i want to and, and what's going to happen here is i have to actually capture it again okay so we're going to capture this brush again and uh, when we do that, it's going to create another preset. We have a question here. Do the values reset to the same number for every stroke, or do they continue randomness? Uh, they, oh, like the angle, every time you draw, it's going to be, it's going to be random. Okay. It's going to be, uh, so if I want like a rough brush, for example, like this one that I'm, I'm kind of painting with here, then every stroke, right? Let's go ahead and, okay, there's one line and I'll draw another one right next to it. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that it's the same brush, but every stroke is a little bit different. And yeah, Cody, it does look like a felt marker. I feel like I'm on this uh, quest to try and create uh, digital brushes that look like the tools I know and love. And I love drawing with felt markers. So maybe that's where that's coming from a little bit. We can also add texture again. I have some, some patterns, some textures that I've imported already. And this is actually pulling your textures from, let's see, uh, what's the best way to access this? Let's go with the paint bucket tool. Um, here in the paint bucket, if I, tap on foreground and go to pattern instead then i tap here i wonder if there's a window patterns i don't know oh yeah there you go window patterns see i don't use all the the menus and stuff i'm just used to doing things how i do them all right so if we go to window patterns you can see all these patterns that i have imported before into um uh, my library okay so when i when i do activate the brush okay right here and I tap on this little drop down, it's pulling in those patterns. So if you want to, uh, again, enhance your brushes a little bit, and that's gonna be our next step, I'll show you some cool things we can do. Um, then I can say, hey, you know, I want this to be, looks like I misspelled that, this DAC <laughs> canvas texture. Um, let's make this brush a little bit bigger. And also I wanna turn on transfer so I can have this opacity jitter. Now I don't want this to be random in my brush, okay? So if I, if I just draw here and there's some opacity jitter, then it's going to be kind of randomized. So what I actually want to do is crank this down and say, instead of having 
like a ton of jitter. Okay, I just I want a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna type this in. My computer is possessed today. Um, if I want a little bit of variation in that brush, again, you can kind of see that if I zoom in. Okay, there's a little bit of variation there. Maybe it's a little bit more fun with an actual color. We can throw that. Oops, select my color here. You can throw that in, and you'll kind of see. Oh, it's it's varying in opacity as I create that stroke. All right. So here I'm going to say I want to control the opacity with pen pressure and I want there to be a minimum opacity of, say, 10 percent. So in other words, the lighter my stroke, the lighter the brush will be and the heavier I push, OK, the darker that'll be. All right. So that's one way, again, to build expression into the brushes that you create. There's also color dynamics that you can do. OK, so we can say hey, I want to jitter the hue um, and the saturation and brightness as I paint. And this will work specifically if you have a color selected with your brush. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to make a new layer. This one's gotten kind of full. But as I paint, look at that. The color, the hue is changing with each stroke. All right, now it's up to you to decide what you want to do with a brush like this but you can see the results are interesting okay in terms of hey maybe you want to create some texture maybe this is something you're gonna plop into firefly and use either way if you find a use for color dynamics that's a fun one as well all right you can add noise to your brush and those are usually the things that i i tend to focus on the other one i do want to mention is spacing so you might find that as you're using your brush, if your spacing is set too low, it may slow down uh, sometimes, not always. I don't want to throw Photoshop under the bus here, but sometimes it may slow down the performance of the app. So you can play with this a little bit um, to your liking and figure out what you want. All right. So the next thing, like I said, I want to show you before we wrap up here in three minutes, ah, time's always flying, is Adobe Firefly. Hopefully you've played with this before, uh, firefly.adobe.com. Awesome, amazing tool. And I went ahead and generated a couple images. We've got some cement here, some concrete. I didn't make those repeating. Apologies to those with trypophobia <laughs> uh, for this one, but I was trying to, let's see what my prompt was, close-up repeating texture with round speckles. Okay, so another way to add another, uh, unique layer, if you will, to your brushes is to use a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and um, download this one. Let's go download this one here. And let's just work super quickly, drag it into Photoshop. All right, I'm just going to select a part of this. It's not a repeating texture, but that's okay. I'm just going to take this and we'll go edit. Uh, let's see, define pattern. Okay, so we've defined brush presets. Now I'm defining a new, new pattern. I'm not going to name that right now, again, because of time. Um, but when I get into my brush again here, okay, under texture, we can tap and select that pattern. So now, why is this not working? Um, let's see, da, 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 contrast. We got to play with some of these settings as well. And truthfully, I will say one of the most effective uh, ways to do this for myself, this may sound um, maybe a bit, a bit like silly or whatever, but I like to just kind of play with the settings until I get what I want, okay? So if something's not working, if it looks weird or whatever, you can play with it. Um, there are blending modes for these textures as well. I'm going to zoom in here because I think this one, yeah, you can kind of see it here. It's starting to finally pick it up. Um, maybe multiply will give me or overlay. Let's see. Anyhow, just play with the blending modes for the texture as well. You'll find some interesting results there. You can kind of see some of that texture is coming into the brush as well. All right. I think we're coming up on the end of our time together. Whew, pro tips is always a right wild ride apologies for the technical issues at the beginning but um, think of it this way if you want to make that brush unique just jump right in tinker with those settings see what you can play with i've given you a few options of things that you can do that i think will make a big difference up front and then as you get into the weeds you can continue to play and see what effects you come up with up next we have another amazing
a wonderful opportunity for you to use technology to the fullest of your ability. Don't be afraid to get in there, get lost, get messy, play with those settings because <laughs> at the end of the day, you might end up with some fun surprises rather than a complete mess. All right. Thanks, everyone. Much love. I hope you have a fantastic Wednesday. I'll be back again next month, actually. So keep an eye out for that. And we may continue to talk about brushes because there are things I didn't actually get to show you that I would love to show you later. All right. With that, take care and I'll see y'all later. Happy Wednesday.